my goodness, giant caterpillars! Just like a day or two ago, these guys were like a third their size. I can't believe it. Sometimes they grow so rapidly. Giant caterpillars, guys. Aren't they just so much fun? We love giant caterpillars, don't we? Wow, they've got some weight to them. Uh, it means I'm feeding them well. These are healthy. These guys, I have no doubt, are going to pupate within the next couple days and or at least burrow, <laughs> and they're gonna become uh, hawk moths. Carolina sphinx moths, uh, gonna, there's many names. <laughs> I wish they would just pick one, but there's so many different ways to specify them. Um, but they're a large, large breed of moth that um, mimics a hummingbird, sorta. And really, really, really cool. These are tobacco hornworms, if you want to know. And they are very fun to breed and great for uh, teaching great for little experimentation and raising um, and watching their life cycle grow. The way these guys curl is very unique. They rest standing up with their face upwards like that, curling and kind of like a little candy cane. Um, this is very scary to predators because it looks like they have big eyes <laughs> and on the front of their head they have actually yellow little spiracles. Those are actually what the caterpillar breathes through, all those little eye looking dots. They are meant to scare away predators by looking like eyeballs, but also that's how they breathe. They don't work the same way as us and don't breathe through a mouth like we do <laughs> or a nose. <laughs> and the horn on their, uh, the tobacco hornworms, by the way, their horn on their rear end is red for tobacco hornworms, and many people mistake them for tomato hornworms because they're found interchangeably on the different plants. Black horns are tomato hornworms, so red is tobacco, but they can be found interchangeably. They like plants of the nightshade family. But yeah, they curl like this when they're resting, and that kind of signals, ooh, look, I'm a really scary looking creature, don't want to eat me. Um, but yeah, about their horns, it's just skin, it can't really, <laughs> can't hurt you, I'd be surprised if it ever does. Um, can't sting, can't, no venom in it, it's just skin. But it's scary, because you know, if you were a bird, what would you think? Uh, Am I gonna eat that? Oh no, that's gonna, that's gonna be poisonous. <laughs> but isn't he so cute? He curling up like a little candy cane. All right. So I'm gonna have to give them a bigger enclosure soon. Um, but, but these guys I'm gonna be taking out soon too. So it'll free up some room because the large, large ones that you see here, they're gonna start pupating. And I'm gonna keep those uh, little cocoons separate from the others so that I can monitor them and their growth. But this is what I wanted to talk about. I'm gonna put my little friend here. <laughs> here you go, hold on. Substrate. I live currently in a very dry, very uh, <laughs> non-moist house. And the air dries up stuff pretty quickly but also humidity is a problem when I don't have substrate for my caterpillars. These are the tobacco hornworms. And I just wanted to talk about my personal experience. This may not work in every climate, every household, every um, enclosure, but it works with mine. Um, NPV is a virus, nuclear polyhedrosis virus. It is something that is extremely, extremely co common in alkaline-based um, insects like caterpillars, chewing insects. It's, they claim it's naturally occurring in Australia, but it can come from a pesticide. But once it targets the creature, the virus spreads rapidly through moisture, um, infecting your whole colony, pretty much. And there's really not an easy way or no way out of it, really. And it's a problem that as a moth breeder I face constantly. It is it is a shame really. But substrate really matters with this. The virus along with other common diseases for caterpillars and just general sickness, it's not a good idea to let moisture collect in their enclosure or uh, not to sound gross but their their fecal matter also is rather moist and 
that can collect from one piece to another piece to another piece and spread disease if any of them have it. Not a good idea. You're gonna want um, the right amount of moisture, right amount of dryness for them so that this um, is not a problem. But what I find is the coconut fiber gives them a place to bury to pupate. It also wicks moisture and absorbs. So when they do make um, fecal matter, it doesn't forever stay a nice, tasty for others, um, moist piece of vegetable or whatever that they ate because uh, caterpillars don't really digest a lot of their food uh, nutrients. So what comes out of them is still mainly what went in. <laughs> um, so it's common for your caterpillars to want to re-eat that and that is not okay. Um, it's maybe in nature, but it's not always the smartest idea when they are in captivity, stop fighting, because of diseases spreading rapidly in a small space. So it is not a great idea to let them eat each other's fecal matter, but it becomes less of an issue once it dries out. The coconut fiber dries that out, and then it's easy for me to come in and collect all of them and throw them out, do what I need to do with them, and Basically, it just makes a nice, better cleanup for them. Also, they end up eating a lot of the coconut fibers, too. It seems that they like to munch on that alongside some of their main food. And that also strengthens and um, dries out, I found, their, uh, their waste. And that makes it a lot less palatable for another caterpillar. <laughs> I know this is a very gross, gross subject, but it's just the truth and this is part of raising insects or any living creature is the gross things. There's always gonna be gross things and you know, there's no way around them. But you know what? In the end, in the end of the day, you have happy, beautiful, healthy moth caterpillars that are going to transform into something unimaginable to them and unimaginable to some of us too. They are very, very, very intelligent and they know their bodies, their systems know what they need. And in domestication and uh, captivity, it's our job to provide the needs that they specifically desire for them. <laughs> Again, I know it looks so cramped in here. A lot of these larger ones are going to be moving very soon. <laughs> Within a day or two, they'll be ready and completely ready to pupate and I'm gonna want to put them in a place where they are undisturbed by others. Not touched, not poked around, not dug into, and definitely not, oh, look at him eating. Very sweet. Not fought with like these little ones. They like getting into little wars. It's so funny. Stop that. They, they, they get really pissed off with each other. <laughs> Would you look at that? Stop being mean. It's you, isn't it? He's mean. I'm, I'm gonna... I am gonna move you from the situation over here. <laughs> because you guys cannot play nice. But yeah, this is my explanation. There are many, 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 many benefits to using a substrate that dries things out. But also, you know, good amount of moisture is fine. Don't want them bone dry. Um, that's good for anti-disease spreading. It's good for cleaning up of uh, fecal matter. It's good for their burrowing. It's good for a lot of things. You just have to know how to do it right. <laughs> what an almost pupating hornworm looks like. They can grow very large in size and in weight, as you can see. But the one thing that you want to look for when raising these caterpillars is the aorta. Basically their heart. This is a dark, dark colored pulsating vein that runs right down the middle of their back. And it's most prominent right here where their patterns end can sort of kind of see it moving around right in the center. Um, once you start seeing that on the caterpillar, he's basically saying, I'm healthy and I'm ready to start pupating soon, which means he'll bury a little bit underground. So what I like to give them for many reasons is coconut fiber. It's a nice clean way of not introducing 
outdoor diseases. I get them in the bricks uh, and they expand when moistured. So moistured. <laughs> they expand when uh, moisture touches them. So I like that substrate personally, but they'll bury themselves a little bit underground and where it's dark and they are undisturbed. It's important not to disturb them when they do this because they are going to make their final molt of skin turning themselves into a pupa. And that is the little chrysalis that is going to eventually emerge as the beautiful hawk moth. And honestly, what a beautiful process this is.